Shakur was just a freshman in high school when Joette made his pro debut, and the Olympic silver medalist is getting his title shot five years faster than Joette, who has virtually twice as many fights and rounds five. All right, gentlemen, this is for the vacant W.O. featherweight title. You received your instructions to address you. Again, I want to caution you. Any punch below this area is going to be called low. Any punch below this area is going to be called low. With that said, I want you to obey my command. Protect yourselves at all times. Touch up now. Good luck to both of you. The WBO vacant featherweight title is on the line. Oscar Valdez felt that he could no longer make 126 pounds. He'll be moving up to 130 pounds in a fight you will see here on ESPN late November. But for now, this belt is vacant. For how many minutes, we do not know. It could be 36 fighting minutes, it could be less. But Shakur Stevenson and Joette Gonzalez are following their dream tonight on ESPN+. Plus. I'm Bernardo Osuna alongside Timothy Bradley and Mark Kriegel. You can feel the tension, Tim. Oh, absolutely. It's going to be a fill-out round for both guys right now. They're going to take a look at one another. And right now, it's going to be about establishing distance for Shakur Stevenson. He's not going to allow Gonzalez to get close. You see the size of Shakur Stevenson who's really come into his own, making a debut just two years and six months ago after winning Olympic silver in Rio 2016. When you see Jouette, he's, you know, high guard, really deflecting a lot of the punches of Shakur Stevenson. And Shakur told us, I hope he throws that jab. That was the one thing he did tell us in the fighter meetings. One thing he'd look for was to dig to the body. Both guys very efficient going to the body as he goes there with a straight left. Straight left. You know, straight punches to the body is, is, is a great it's a great weapon, but it's also dangerous. You kind of expose yourself for the uppercut because you, you got to kind of lean in when you throw the body shot. You see the reflexes of Shakur Stevenson and the way that Joette likes to work from the outside. See, Stevenson can do this all night. Keeping the jab out there on him. Controlling the distance, not allowing Gonzalez to get to where he needs to be, and that's mid-range to land his power shots. And you see the jab from Shakur Stevenson, the one-two. That high guard will allow Shakur to dig to the body. We talked about how he doesn't get hit, and so far, that statistic is holding up in this first round, but it's just a feel-out round also for Joette Gonzalez. And Joette Gonzalez is going to have to figure out a way to get close and to get Stevenson against the ropes because that's where Stevenson is vulnerable. He's inside, inside the pocket. You see the vision of Shakur Stevenson just waiting to see what Joette is going to do. Yeah, Joette's trying to, trying to establish himself and trying to get in the range. He's trying to come behind his jab occasionally, but he's rushing things. Talked about patience. Neither guy just starting off at a crazy rhythm. So that's what you wanted from both guys. Temper the emotions. Don't let everything that built up this fight leading into tonight get inside your head. And we're seeing patience. We're seeing skill. We're seeing a little bit of everything but from both Shakur Stevenson and Joette Gonzalez. Nice, nice short right hook there from Joette Gonzalez. I mean, from uh, Shakur Stevenson. Is, mm. Those were blocked, but you could see the power behind the shots of Shakur Stevenson. And then uh, when you see Joette Gonzalez, you know what he came in to do to kind of study Shakur early on, show some respect, but kind of see what Shakur had. What do you expect from Joette here in the second round? I expect him to uh, come in with a little more hand movement, step, try to uh, pick up the pace. Because Shakur, he'll fight like this all night. He got to do something different, Joette. You see the footwork there between the two fighters trying to establish the outside foot stepping on each other and the quickness of Shakur Stevenson, Tim. Absolutely. And what Shakur Stevenson is doing, he's making Joette pay for all his mistakes. He's lunging in with punches. You know, he's getting, that, getting ahead of himself a little bit. He's rushing this stuff. He needs to take his time and come behind his jab and figure out another way to get inside. What does Shakur do best in terms of adjusting from what you've shared with him in sparring and training? Well, he had real good reflexes. 
you know, when when somebody trying to put a lot of pressure on him, he know how to gauge you real good. Yeah, that's something like that, he's doing right now. Yeah, that's something that greatness, you know, that, that prodigy that we see in Shakur Stevenson being one of the highest ranked fighters out of the Olympics. All right, you want to, let's look at this overhead cam. Look at both feet together. Shakur Stevenson is right at mid-range. That's it. Mid-range is where both fighters can hit each other. But then you see Watch every your feet, time Dave. Watch your feet. Stay off. Gonzalez step forward. What does Stevenson do? He steps two, two steps back right there. That's how he's able to control the distance. Now, you switch southpaw and orthodox, so you play this game all night long when you're in the ring, Terrence. You see Joette trying to step on his foot every time to not allow those exits for Shakur. Yeah, of course, he's trying to make him uh, become stationary because he can't catch up to him because Shakur got good footwork. Uh, work. He's very fast on his feet, and he's very good with his reflexes. You know, there, Vic Dracolich says, Joette, watch those low blows. And we just saw the sneakiness of Shakur Stevenson. I'm sure you didn't teach him or help him out with that in the, in the gym at all, Terrence, but how he's bringing down the head of Joette Gonzalez in the clinch. It's good, because it's making him work. It's making him use more energy than he's uh, willing to use. When he pushes his head down, yep. uh, you got to push your head back up, and you got to use exert more energy to pick your head back up. You see that characteristic sneer on the face of Shakur Stevenson, Tim. Just, you know what, what I'm looking at, I'm looking at his eyes. Look how focused he is. Keep up, keep you know, up. he sees everything coming. And he's, rea he's reacting to anything Gonzalez do. There's that vision of Shakur Stevenson that makes him so difficult to hit. So far, the numbers hold up as Joet Gonzalez has rarely been able to lay a hand on Shakur Stevenson because, Tim, his defense is sublime. His defense is superb. Ikes Kavayaskas, your mandatory defense. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, He's a good, strong fighter. I'm looking for an exciting fight. Come December 14th, I'm ready to get back out there and display and put on a great show. We'll be at Madison Square Garden. We'll check it out on ESPN December 14th at 9 Eastern. You know more than anybody the competitiveness of Shakur Stevenson. That's something that only elite level athletes have. Of course, of course. Me and Shakur, we go back and forth. In basketball, we go back and forth in the game. We go back and forth in sparring. He just like me. He don't want to give an inch, and I don't want to give an inch, and that makes for, you know, iron sharpen iron. You know, we don't want to give an inch here, but Mark Kriegel's in the corner with the Gonzalez family. Mark, what do you got? I spoke to Jose Gonzalez after each of the first two rounds. His reaction was the same. More straight punches from Joet, more pressure. What I'm seeing is a guy who can't cut off the ring to get to that pressure. Watch the feet. Exactly. Look at the feet. Both guys, you know, southpaw versus the right-hander. You're going to get some, you know, some stepping on the lead foot. You see Jouette. He's trying to step on his foot, trying to keep Stevenson still. You know, when I was looking at this fight, one of the keys was going to be closing the exits for Jouette Gonzalez. That allows us several things, uh, Terrence. If you close the exits, you can also work the body and slow them down. Yeah, of course. You can cut the ring off as well. You know, and then Shakur wouldn't be able to uh, slide out the back door like he's doing right now. But Shakur's feet so fast, Joette can't get to the spot before him. A nice left hand from Joette Gonzalez, but it's hard to get more than one shot at a time on against uh, Shakur Stevenson, too. It is. You know, Shakur Stevenson picks up his feet, changes direction real quickly. But what I, I like from Joette Gonzalez is he's going down to the body. If you can't hit the head, the body's going to stand still. He's trying to figure out a way to get closer to Stevenson, and he's landing a right hand to the body. See, there's the a lunging there. Yeah, it was a little lunging. Come in. And Stevenson wasn't set to punch, but nice little body shot right there to cut him off by Jouet. Well, both of these guys are very effective to the body. Shakur Stevenson tends to land 33% of his total shots right. to the body, and Stop for Joette, it's 33% of all his punches landed are to the body. So that's one way that these guys are going to try to work at each other. Yeah, of course. You know, Shakur, he loved to go to the body with that straight left. He loves to jab to the body. And Joette trying to go to the body to slow him down. But like I said, Shakur 
right there one, one minute and he's going the next. Him up. All right, round three is in the books here in Reno, Nevada for Shakur Stevenson and Joe Gonzalez. Bernardo Zuna alongside Timothy Bradley and Mark Kriegel bringing you the world title fight. Shakur Stevenson taking on Joette Gonzalez for the vacant featherweight WBO title. And so far, it's been more of a chess match than a war. It's definitely going to be a chess match because Stevenson is not going to make it a war at all. He's on box. He's going to use the sweet science against Joette Gonzalez. Joette's trying to inch in close. Ooh, nice leg Coming shot in, right there from Jouette. Doesn't matter where you hit him, right? Long as it's not low and the referee doesn't call it, you got to find a way to slow down your opponent. Talked about concentration and focus, and, and we've seen it from both guys. Yeah. You know, Shakur is in his zone, and Jouette has not been, he's not getting desperate yet. No, he's getting desperate. <laughs> he's definitely getting desperate. And, you know, there's Ooh, nothing worse than. Nice little shot right there, but there's nothing worse than blow. actually trying to hit it, you know, trying to hit a guy. When you're constantly missing, you're going to get desperate. That's what Shakur's betting on, the fact that Joette will have to take more risks. And those straight shots yep. from Shakur Stevenson are just working for him so well. Right here he is. Here the overhead shot right here. Look at the footwork of Shakur Stevenson. He's always two steps ahead of Joette Gonzalez. Now he's stepping around right here. You see the foots? The foots come together right there. And then what does he do? He steps inside and he ties up Joey Gonzalez and walks him right back to the center of the ropes. I mean in the center of the ring, excuse me. The most important thing when a southpaw faces an orthodox fighter is establishing the outside foot. You don't allow your right. opponent to move in the direction that he wants and therefore you dictate where he can and cannot go and allow your punches to meet him when they're there. You see Joette once again having to reach. He's got a two inch reach advantage over Shakur Stevenson, but it's speed, reflexes, and quickness that have Shakur just dictating the pace. Every so time Joette takes a step forward, Stevenson takes two steps back or three steps back. He's always making him fall short with his punches, and then he's there to counter. Beautiful head movement there. For both guys, Shakur making Joette miss. A third of the way in this fight. This has been the story for Shakur Stevenson. That left hand to the body is vicious. It stops your opponent in his tracks. Anything he's thinking about, he has to step back and regroup. It drains your opponent, sipes the gas tank of your opponent, and it's also discouraging when you're getting hit down to the body. There you see the laser focus in the eyes of Shakur Stevenson. Joette Gonzalez continues to be dangerous. He's trying to unravel this Rubik's Cube and figure it out, but time is ticking. Good analogy right there, that's nice, Rubik's Cube. All right, let's take a look at the score so far from Steve Kim's scorecard on ESPN.com. 40-36, a shout-out in favor of Shakur Stevenson. A shot to the back of the head there from Joette Gonzalez. Yeah, that's frustration. Yes. That's frustration, not being able to get to the cat. You know, that happens. So far, we're seeing that sparring sessions are very different and the development of a fighter oh, over yeah. two years. Uh, you can see both guys are a lot better than probably when they were in the ring two years ago before Shakur's debut. Hey, Bernardo, sparring sessions are sparring sessions. I got my behind whooping sparring sessions, but let me tell you this. If we put on these small gloves, no helmet, and we got in the ring under these bright lights, I guarantee you I would have I would have came out on top. Yeah, the dog in you would have come out That's just right. like it always did. That's right. setting up that counter right and he goes down to the body with that left. Joe Gonzalez continues to follow. 
trying to put pressure on, but the slickness of Shakur Stevenson. Next level and the quickness once again, the one-two stabbing at the face of Gonzalez. You got to figure, Joette Gonzalez has to figure out a way to, to, to close the exits. You know, instead of throwing the straight punches, he needs to come around with punches to try to trap Stevenson. Joette's doing the same thing, Bernardo, over and over and over. That's not hard to figure out. You know, Stevenson has one of the best IQs in boxing. Nice counter there. He made Gonzalez reach, and he made him pay. But look where he was at. He was near the ropes, and he still knew where he was, exactly where he was. He knew he had a little space to go. He steps back, and he counters. Beautiful work by Shakur Stevenson. Nothing too powerful yet from Shakur as he sticks his tongue out momentarily. Just a split second short, a millimeter short as well as Gonzalez here in round number five. What adjustments does Gonzalez need to make? I just told you, he needs to do something different. He's doing the same thing, jab, jab, trying to land a right hand to the body. I know, he but needs give to, me a specific. He needs to come around with the hooks to cut off the exit. That's what he needs to do. And when he tries to get in, he needs to come behind a double jab. That was a double right hand right there, and he, and he hit Shakur with that. See, that was a beautiful changeup by Gonzalez. Double right hand. So the formula's there. But Shakur did say, I hope he goes with that double right hand. I got something. Whoa, he la whoa. Uh, Gonzalez landed the double right hand right there. IQ. Too much defense. I think at some point, his father's going to say, hey, you got to go out there and risk, go take a risk, because if not, Shakur's going to just peck away at you and keep outpointing you. It's that IQ. What did Shakur do right there? Did the right thing. He tied up Jouette and, not, and didn't allow him to work at the distance Jouette needed to work. You know, leading into this fight, we knew that Shakur does not throw a lot of punches, but he's extremely effective. But some people figured Joette's going to be in there pressuring, pressuring, pressuring. That's right. not his style. He's also very cerebral, yes. try to break you down punch by punch fighter. And that's why he's having trouble finding Shakur. Although there, he lands a couple shots. This is exactly where he needs to be. He needs to trap the cat in the corner. He came behind the double right hand and then came with the combinations afterwards. Beautiful defense. Hand up. Held the phone right there. Didn't get caught texting. Nothing landed on Shakur Stevenson in that sequence. Did you say Texan? You, you know, man, we always like from get... from Texas? No, texting. Texting. Okay, okay. Well, you know, man, my <laughs> accent is kind of, you know... It's Louisiana. Nah. <laughs> it's Palm Springs. I'm just messing with you, man. I know, baby. But this is, you know, a fight aficionado's virtuoso performance from... Shakur Stevenson on the defensive side. I think he could do a lot more offensively like there where he connects with the left hook. But in terms of defensive prowess, this is exactly what we expected from the young prospect. Listen, you can't give up defense for offense. That's a rule. And Shakur Stevenson is great at that. The concentration level it takes to fight like Shakur fights is impressive. There you see a nice left uppercut from Shakur. Gonzalez trying to work the body. That's exactly what Gonzalez has to do. At this moment right now, while he's close, he got to let those hands go. Long, and you long. see the push off right there from, from Stevenson. Joanne has to come right back and get into that pocket and make things rough for the young man. That's exactly what his father said he needed to do. Make it a rough war in the ring because if he can stand still, he can do some work against Shakur. See, Gonzalez is right where he needed to be, but what did he do? He pulled straight out. And what did Shakur Stevenson do? He caught him with something straight, with the straight left hand. Ooh, nice left upstairs, and he follows it up with a right to the body. Did Shakur Stevenson a nice uppercut from Shakur? Part of it blocked by Gonzalez, who keeps a high guard. But just the offensive power of Gonzalez not there through the first six rounds because Shakur defensively is pitching a shot. And let's take a look at the stats over the last five opponents. Punches landed per round, 24, but tonight it's only 21%. It's only 21, but that's at a 10% clip. 
and a 13% power punch con uh, connect number. That's paltry offense mm. for a fighter like Gonzalez who depends on accuracy. You, you laid that out perfectly in the lead up to this fight, Tim. Yeah, you know, accuracy is important, but you know, you, if you can't hit the target, <laughs> you're not gonna have any accuracy. You know, it's hard to hit the target. When he says, I can't tire him out, to me, that's got to be deflating. It is deflating. You know, you know, when you're fighting a fight and everything you do, nothing works. Nice sequence right there. And I'll, and I'll continue my story in just a second. Nice sequence right there from Jouet. That's exactly where he needs to be. He needs to get busy inside the pocket. But as I was saying, when you're fighting a fight and you everything you do, you're getting hit. Everything you try, Ooh, nice you're missing. Hand. Yeah, you're missing. You're not you're being successful. It's equivalent to not having money to feed your family, bro. That's how it feels like. You know, it just feels that you need a little help. And you know, Shakur just makes Joe Wet miss. There it is again, making a miss. Two punches. A little body shot. Beautiful defense by Shakur Stevenson right there. Nice glazing punch right there. You see those overhead shots from Joette Gonzalez when Shakur Stevenson's holding and Vic Dracovic going to let him work out of that. Probably the, the most successful round for Joette Gonzalez here in round number seven. Getting Stevenson pinned against the ropes. Against the ropes. He has nowhere to go but backwards or try to get to the side. You know, you can use the ropes as an ally, baby, in a fight. You got to use everything you can to get your opponent. And that's exactly what Jouette's doing. He's getting aggressive right now. Why? Shakur Stevenson is having a little low on his offense. Beautiful. Nice shot. Shot there from Jouette Gonzalez. He's finding an opening for his shots as he pushes Stevenson into the corner and the ropes. You see now. A little bit of hope in the eyes of Joette Gonzalez as Stevenson is a little bit more still, not as slick in moving out of the way of the punches. Stevenson right now looks like he's taking this round off right now. He's probably a little tired. You know, it's tough. It's, it's exhausting when you know not trying to get hit, when you're stepping out all the time, when you're boxing the way Stevenson boxed. And it's ironic that Joette Gonzalez was just telling his father, I can't tire him out, and yet he comes out for the seventh round, and Shakur seemingly takes that round off. You're not shooting at where you think it is, it's where it's gonna be. And now, through seven rounds, Steve Kim finally gave that seventh round to Joette Gonzalez. Gotta agree with him, his best round in the fight. Now, will he get a little bit of confidence here and be able to walk down Shakur Stevenson in the late part of this fight? Just the last round, we saw eight punches landed, but the 57th thrown, that made a big difference in the fact that he was coming forward. It's still only 14%, but it was a good round for him. Absolutely. The second half of this fight is going to be very important for Jouette Gonzalez. He's going to have to pick up the tempo. He's going to have to take more risks. He's behind in the fight, and he's going to have to close the gap and pinch, of course, even in against the ropes. Nice long right hand to the body from Joette Gonzalez, who's finding a target now. But he gets caught with a nice counter left from Shakur Stevenson, who gets admonished for the push off. Joette feeling a little bit more confident, seeing the openings. Now he feels his punch land on the body of Shakur Stevenson. How does that change your mindset when you're in the ring and you're finally feeling yourself land? Well, the, you know, the momentum, the momentum is, you know, kind of shifting. You know, you're having success, now you're landing your shots. Now you're feeling, and you're saying to yourself, I think he's getting a little bit tired. I'm in this fight. I can do yep. this. I can That's become right. a world champion. He let a lot of the early rounds go, but there's still a lot of fight left. So Shakur Stevenson is trying to pepper with that jab. What a nice, mm. stiff, get out of my face jab. And you see the straight left hand, the backhand of Shakur Stevenson. It stops. Gonzalez in his tracks. Anytime he steps forward, he jabs him right down to the body with that right, with that left hand. Gonzalez just doesn't have that 
warrior go get you at all cost mentality. It's not in his game, but he's going to need to find it down the stretch here. Gonzalez continue to try to work the body of Shakur Stevenson. We talked about the efficiency of both guys going to the body. So far, it's worked for Shakur, and Gonzalez is trying to find success, but the constant movement of Stevenson is making that difficult. Yeah, the constant movement, the thinking, the punch, punch selection of Stevenson is frustrating as well. Frustrating as well to Gonzalez. And every time Gonzalez takes a step forward, that jab is there to meet him. Right close. Back up. Gonzalez coming right back at Shakur Stevenson. Stevenson keeps moving to his right, jabbing with that hand. Nice left uppercut from Shakur Stevenson, finding those wow. openings. And here we see the aggressiveness. That's ring IQ right there. See a fighter lean forward. Lift him up with the uppercut. Good job. For the Shakur smiling as he goes back to his corner. You see the number of punches landed so far. Double for Shakur Stevenson. What did you take from the instructions that Wally Moses gave to his grandson? What he's trying to do is he wants his grandson to set him up. He says the left hand is available for you. You know, let him get a little bit aggressive. He's, he's, he's responding to the jab. Now come with the left hand. He wants him to set a trap with the power shot. There it is. He said he's going to walk right into it. And what did he do? He walked right into it. He walked right into a right hand, but Wally Moses wants a devastating left hook or uppercut to come from Shakur Stevenson. There you see the body shots from Joette Gonzalez, who even though he's not landing at a high clip against Shakur Stevenson, it's a good percentage. Mark, what's the feeling in Joette Gonzalez's corner? Jose Gonzalez just made a remarkable concession. Joette has to throw more punches, but he has to stop this guy to win the fight. He has to stop this guy to win the fight. Thank you very much, Mark. Pretty much seeing it like everybody else in America is probably that's seeing right. this. And, and sometimes that's the hardest thing to get out of a corner, to understand that they seeing it from their eyes, but he's giving himself an honest assessment. That's right. That's very important to give your fighter an honest assessment. You know, but he still needs to tell his fighter on how he can get to a guy like Shakur Stevenson. You know, when you're doing, you're throwing straight shots all the time, you're rushing in, you know, what happens is you're allowing Shakur Stevenson to tie you up. You know, if I was in Gonzalez's corner, I would tell him, you know what, switch these punches up. Change your combination. You know, blind him with the jab and come with something looping over the top. Surprise Shakur Stevenson with something different. You gotta something go, he hasn't done many. You, um, you gotta go with something unorthodox against a fighter who is so technically sound like Shakur Stevenson. You know, you see fighters who, who are successful, you know, like uh, Emmanuel Navarrete. Why is he successful? You don't know where the punches are coming from. The long arms of Joette Gonzalez, he's too technical in here, trying to go against a guy who's even more technical. That's right. Look at the footwork once again from Shakur Stevenson right now. Still great footwork from Shakur Stevenson. Look how he gets away from that lead foot of Gonzalez, and he keeps moving to his own right, controlling the outside. If the southpaw can control the outside foot, the lead foot, He's in position to land his power shots. And right there, Shakur Stevenson landed a nice left shot to the solar plexus that just stopped Gonzalez in his track. Now, what I'm most impressed about is when he tries to step on his foot, Shakur is able to get around exactly. that foot to get out. Exactly. That's top-level stuff. It's top level. It is top-level stuff. Ring IQ by the young Shakur Stevenson. Joe Gonzalez still trying to find that opening in Shakur Stevenson's armor. The body work has been there for Gonzalez, but there's always an answer from Shakur. Trying to get him to put it all out there. You know, we as fighters, when we training since we were, you know, 10 years old, I was training since I was 10 years old, and so was Joe. You know, we put so much time into the gym. We put so much time into the gym. You know, and we sacrifice so many days, hourless days, blood, sweat, and tears, you know. And then our moment comes. 
and when we fall short, man, it, it's, it's, it's a terrible feeling. It's a terrible feeling, man. It must be devastating because both of these guys, since they were very young boys, have dreamed of having this exact moment. And so far, Steve Kim's scorecard on ESPN.com, only that seventh round in favor of Gonzalez. And even his father and his brother understand that this is a one-sided fight favoring the ultra-talented Shakur Stevenson, who wants to follow in the footsteps of Sugar Ray Leonard, of Floyd Mayweather Jr., of Pernell Whitaker, and he's putting on that type of performance. Yes, he is. And guess what? Joet Gonzalez needs a Julio Cesar Chavez, Meldrick Taylor moment in order to win this fight, and his corner knows it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. He's doing everything he can. <laughs> but it's just not good enough. You know, Shakur Stevenson is just a, a special talent. You know, with great eyes, great footwork, great IQ. There we see the offense of Gonzalez that his father was asking for. Some of it lands, but the defensive prowess of Shakur Stevenson allows nothing to land flush. Just grazing blows. But, I, you know, I love the determination and the will. The will of Gonzalez, you know, he's, he's trying. He's trying, he's doing the best he possibly can right now. Sometimes you need to be a dog in there, and I don't see that part of his demeanor. I mean, he's trying, man. I mean, he's trying, but, you know, Shakur Stevenson is just a difficult guy to fight and a difficult guy to hit. Look at him, I mean, he's rushing forward. He's letting his hands go, but look at the, just how fluent and how easy it is for Shakur Stevenson to just be two steps ahead of him. We've, we've been accustomed to seeing a guy like Floyd Mayweather Jr. make great fighters look ordinary. Joet Gonzalez is not an ordinary no, fighter, but Shakur Stevenson is proving that he's next level. Yes, he is. And like I said in the beginning, I said this kid was the future of boxing. And I'm standing by that. Because he is the future of boxing, because he understands the sweet science of the game. Hit and don't get hit. I mean, he'll have his detractors because people love an offensive style. But at the end of the day, you can't knock what he knows how to do in the ring because he's exceptional at it. All right, Mark, what's going on in the corners? Wally Moses. Wants Shakur to keep doing the same thing he's been doing. Be patient. When Joette comes in, hit him with the left hand to the body. Get out with the right hook. I mean, at some point, there's there's fighters that you really don't even need to say much to. Shakur Stevenson is out there just doing his thing, and now we're in the championship rounds. Not even breathing hard. You know, that's hours and hours of work in the gym, sparring against the best fighters in the world. Sparring guys like Terrence Bud Crawford. I mean, Shakur Stevenson's been in there with Vasily Lomachenko. He told us a story about calling Carl Moretti, matchmaker for top rank, and saying, hey, I want to go to camp with Vasily, and I want to spar with him. They're not going to pay you, he told him. I just want to be there. He wasn't going to fight a southpaw, they said. Hey, I know he's fighting Riga now. Get me in there. All right, go. Go for free if you want to. Get some work in. At the end, they kept him the entire time. And Papachenko said, pay the man. He earned it. That's Shakur Stevenson in a nutshell, trying to prove himself against the best. That's it. One of the most competitive fighters out there today. And also the future of boxing. Joet Gonzalez trying to fire away, but he's just not in range. He can't find even the body of Shakur Stevenson. Slick fighters, they say, work the body. You're going to find it. Why is Shakur's body not even there? Because, like I said, every time Gonzalez come up, come up. takes a step forward, what does Shakur Stevenson do? He takes two steps back, not allowing him to hit his body. The other thing is Shakur's not just moving in one direction. He switches it up. I mean, his right. footwork is impressive. He doesn't go straight back, doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Look at the outside control of Shakur Stevenson. Every time he lands that backhand, 
Look at his foot placement. There it, there it is. Straight left to the body. No return fire from his opponent. If Joette can't find Shakur's wow. foot, guess what? He's about to get hit. He just had him in the corner, and he didn't land not one punch. Joette's giving it a shot. Joette, you got to admire his tenacity. I you got to admire his discipline. But at the end of the day, he's got to do something different. He's got to change it up if he wants to become a world champion tonight. Because what worked for him in his first 23 professional fights is not working for him tonight against Shakur Stevenson in his 13th pro bout. The championship is on the line, and Joette Gonzalez has to have a dramatic moment. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. had a moment against uh, Sergio Martinez, but it wasn't enough. He needs a senior moment like he had against Meldrick Taylor because Shakur Stevenson is putting on a boxing clinic. Nice combination punching there from Shakur. Ooh, and a trip there. I thought this fight was going to be competitive. This fight's not competitive at all. It's one side of Shakur Stevenson dominate. And pretty soon we'll be talking about Shakur Stevenson. As big as he looked tonight, how long can he stay at exactly. his weight class? He's not even a full-blown man yet. You don't get that full strength until you're about 25, 26. That's when you start your prime. He's 22 years old. Defensive game is A+. plus. He didn't show too much of the offense tonight. Why do you think that is? Didn't need to. Corner didn't want him to. Ooh, you're talking about Shakur. Shakur. Oh, he's making him pay. Every time he make a miss, he's making him pay. You don't think he could have stopped him? He no. He, he, you know what? Gonzalez is a tough, he's a tough cookie, man. You know, he's undefeated. He's undefeated for a reason. Nice combination. One, two. Upstairs, downstairs. Shakur Stevenson. At this level, you can't knock everybody out. I you know, especially that. when you're fighting against an undefeated fighter that has seven years' experience over you. Now I'm interested in what the interaction is going to be in a minute and 25 seconds once that final bell rings. Is there going to be that long, sought-after respect for, Joe, for uh, Shakur Stevenson from the Gonzalez family, or is he just going to walk away? I'm going to tell you this. You know, fights like this, it's so discouraging being a fighter that only losing in. You know, I would rather get knocked out than having to go through this beatdown and this embarrassment. You know, the way that Gonzalez is getting hit and the fact that he can't do anything. He can't touch your course, Stevenson. He, he's right there to, to hit him, but he, he can't touch him. We talk about vision. We talk about reflexes. That's what Terrence Crawford was telling us about Shakur Stevenson. Yeah. What makes him special? He sees everything. His body reacts impressively. Look at how he made a miss with that right hand. Shakur Stevenson proving that as a defensive fighter, yep. the fact that he loves Pernell Whitaker and that he watches and emulates him, Floyd Mayweather, Sugar Ray Leonard, well, it showed tonight. He definitely showed tonight. Joel Gonzalez is out of range, unable to find Shakur Stevenson. But he's still trying. Yes. He's still behaving like a fighter. He's got the heart of a warrior. He just did not have the tools to deal with. A man who wants to be known amongst the best in boxing history. Today was the first step in that direction for Shakur Stevenson. The camera was closer to hitting him harder than Joette did the entire fight, and Carl Moretti just standing between him says, I don't even go over there. <laughs> but Shakur Stevenson put on quite a performance tonight. And unless something crazy happens, this man should be a world champion. Ain't nothing crazy happening. This is Shakur Stevenson, just the anticipation of being named a world champion. Just defense, look at the footwork, outside control, nice step back. When the lead foot goes back, the back foot goes back, always in distance to be able to land a counter punch. Every time Gonzalez will step forward, what does he do? Nice body shot down there to back him up. Beautiful shot by Shakur Stevenson. That's been the, that was the sequence all night. Bernardo, everything behind the jab, blinding him right there, going down to the body. Nice movement. 
Finding a little exit door. Good movement right here for Shakur Stevenson. Just see the efficiency of Shakur Just. Stevenson. And in, in a style for Joette that he doesn't waste punches tonight, he had to throw punches and he yeah. didn't. And here are the total number of punches. 11% landed from Joette Gonzalez. Only 3% of those jabs, four total in this fight. And look at the 43% power punch clip out of 206 for Shakur Stevenson, a virtuoso performance. And we're just moments away from hearing the words these two fighters have dreamed of. Ladies and gentlemen, after going all 12 rounds here in Reno, Nevada, all three judges turned in identical scorecards of 119 to 109. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. And now, WBO featherweight world champion from Brick City, Shakur Stevenson. 119-109, that means that only round seven went in favor of Joette Gonzalez, a virtuoso performance from Shakur Stevenson, who puts that Mexican sombrero on once again. We see Terrence Crawford and 